Tis the spooky season, truly a dressmaker's holiday. This year I am making a modern, pumpkin-infested iteration of the beautiful 18th century gown, the chemise à la reine. It will be a chemise à la ween, if you will. Though there are portraits of plenty of different styles of this dress, I will be basing mine on this extant example that belonged to Madame Oberkampf, currently housed in the Musée de la Toile de Jouy in France. I'll be using modern materials such as elastic and modern printed fabric, which I've got to say is pretty fabulous. It's from Darnit and Stitch, my favorite fabric shop, and it glows in the dark. What I like about the Oberkampf dress is its simple neckline with no frills and its flat side bodice panels that help one avoid the Michelin man look seen on others. However, I do want to pay homage to the poofiness of Marie Antoinette's look and add some puffs at the top of the sleeves. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling pretty powerful. I feel like I've got armour on. I mean, armour made of cling film and duct tape, but armour nonetheless. So the front bits and the back bits are just all gonna be gathered up with elastic anyway. So all I really need a pattern piece for is the side panel. So I've drawn that there and then I'm going to do some clever things with measuring and hopefully that will work out. If it doesn't work out perfectly, this will obviously be gathered at the front and the back so I'll have a little bit of leeway just to sort of shuffle things around a bit. Ooh. Mm. A nice sweaty shell. Gross. So using a combination of taking measurements from my duct tape pieces and just taking measurements of myself, I've come up with a rough pattern for the bodice. The skirt, I am just going to do the customary long rectangle gathered in at the top kind of deal. I do still need to mark where we're going to have uh, channels for elastic going across here because we're going to have one at the underbust and then one at the waist, which will just be at the bottom here. and. That is going to help create that gathered effect that is so common on the chemise à and it's also going to help me get into the thing. I do hope you'll forgive the lack of my usual fabric cutting time lapse with entertaining music. I did film it, but as the bodice and skirt consist almost entirely of rectangles, it was incredibly boring. So enjoy me filling the bobbin on my hand turned 1930s sewing machine instead. We start by stitching the skirt pieces together, just two big rectangles. I'm going to add pockets later as we're on a bit of a tight deadline. Then I'm pinning and stitching the bodice pieces, one rectangle for the front and one for the back, and then the two side panels we drafted earlier. There's no historical basis for using my vintage sewing machine. It certainly wasn't used in the 18th century. I just like it. Next, I'm pinning some cotton twill tape to the front bodice piece under the bust. Once stitched, this will become a channel for the elastic. Before we gather the skirt, we need to take some measurements. The skirt needs to be gathered more on the side panels to compensate for the extra volume that will be given by the elastic at the waist on the front and back panels. Does that make sense? I'm stitching in another piece of cotton tape for the elastic at the waist, which will also cover the raw edge of the seam allowance. Yes, does it still have a foot? Let me see, let me look. Is it ragged and covered with gook? Um, let me explain.
I'm pinning the shoulder straps to the front neckline facing and I'll baste those in place. Also, how cute are these scissors that my lovely friend Jazz got me? Right, so here's the thing. I hate gathering something down into a specific size and then pinning it to a specific thing so it's perfectly even and perfect. I hate it so much. So, in case you similarly hate having to do this thing that is incredibly stressful because if it doesn't look right then it's all going to be ruined, here are a couple of my tips. First of all, get thyself to a flat surface. I'm on the floor, this surface is flat enough for me, you may have a desk that's the right height. I'm just feeling the floor today, you know? We have our thing here with our, either your gathering stitch run through or your funky zigzag stitch with a strong thread thread through the middle. Make sure the knot on one end is really securely tied and it is big enough that it's not going to be pulled through the fabric. Then grab the thread at the other end and obviously being careful you don't break any of the threads. Gather this down so it is like way smaller than you need. So for example, I'm gathering it into this top edge here. And so pulling it down to like that width is way smaller than I need. Then line up each of the edges and you may just have to rearrange the gathering a bit at the edge so that you can see it. Line up just the edges with what you need. You can either just hold this or you can pin them. I'm gonna pin them in place so nothing can go wrong. So I'm gonna pin this, but making sure that I'm not like pinning through the gathering thread so that that can still move. Once these are secured in, you're just gonna really gently pull this outwards until you reach the point where you can't pull outwards anymore because your flat fabric that you're pinning to is fully stretched out. Now at this point, it doesn't matter where the balance is in terms of where all of these ruffles are because you're gonna sort that out in a minute. What you just need to make sure is that the bottom bit is as tight as you need it in order to fit into this. So for example, where I pulled this out, it has come a little bit loose, so I'm just gonna adjust that. And you just need to hold on to that edge, pull that to adjust it, and then when you think you have more or less got that, the length that you're gonna need, tie a really secure knot on the side that you've been adjusting so that the gathering thread will stay exactly the length you need and then all you need to do is adjust these gathers so that they're evenly distributed. I'm just going to do a French knot because I find it's a really nice way to get a knot like right up against the fabric. You just got to make sure that you hold on to the little coils that you wrapped around the needle while you're pulling the thread through and then that knot just stays close to the fabric. And then it's just a case of pinning this thing to within an inch of its life. Or perhaps a more appropriate phrase would have been pinned to within half an inch of its life because I have pretty much placed pins every half inch. And because there are so many pins, I am going to tack this, baste it, however you say. Um, I am going to baste this before running under my machine because I didn't do that when I was joining the skirt to the bodice and I did break my sewing machine needle, which was a bugger. Let's spend some time doing the thing that's going to save us time and money in the long run. So trying on at this stage, I've had to pinch out a little bit of fabric out of the straps because where I've pinned the back more or less where I wanted it to go, it sort of goes at a diagonal angle over my shoulder and in like towards my neck in the back, which means that if this isn't pinned out, it sort of flaps around a lot. So I'll take out a little bit there before even thinking about sleeves. And then in terms of the fit around the rest of it, I could do with this bit of elastic under the bust coming in quite a bit, like a good sort of at least an inch, maybe even a couple of inches as it is elasticated. Similarly on the waist, it's okay on the front, but on the back, it's a little bit sort of 
I mean, I know all of this fabric is going to be there anyway, but I could do with just a bit of that coming out and then where that fabric will be pulled in a bit more, I'm just going to press in some pleats so that's not quite as poofy on the back and that will stay put. So a couple of things to fix. I'll go fix those and then come back. Now, while I do not believe that alcohol is the answer to everything, I don't think there is a home remedy quite like drinking a cauldron of gin and lemonade whilst doing some hand sewing and re-watching old Bernadette Manor videos. I just don't think any pills will come close to that. Cauldron responsibly. So this is more or less the pattern for the sleeve cap. So in order to make the top of the sleeve poofy, I'm gonna draw lines down this at regular intervals, cut it up into strips, and then you space the strips out more and then sort of like join the curve over the top of them. I'm always genuinely amazed by how massive sleeve pattern pieces are. So this is the, the poofy top of the sleeve, and then this is the rest of the sleeve. This is just gonna be joined at the side seams and attached to this, which has to be gathered on both the bottom and the top. <sighs> Why did I set myself this project? I must have filled my yearly quota for gathering by now. Gathering the sleeve head into the sleeve body, the rest of the sleeve. Gathering that down uh, actually went quite well. I thought it looked quite even. I think I'm getting better at gathering. I mean, the stress has certainly given me enough practice. Upon reflection, I don't think it's the gathering down that I hate. I think what it is that I don't like is expecting something to take a certain length of time and then it takes a ridiculously longer length of time uh, when you are very, very strictly on a deadline. Because the thing is, this video has to be out by or on Halloween. If I release this like even a day after Halloween, it's basically useless. Like not useless for me because I will wear this dress year round. I have a much loved scarecrow jumper that is very Halloween-y that I wear year round. Also happens to kind of match these trousers. See, we, we got a match. This jumper I happily wear year round because I think that the idea of wearing clothes for like one specific day a year is redonkulous. So I will wear the dress year round, but in terms of YouTube and in terms of you guys, <laughs> I feel like this, this definitely has a hard deadline of Halloween, which is six days away. Sounds like a lot, and it would be if my only task was to finish the dress. I also have the video to edit and I am notoriously slow at editing videos. <laughs> Doing stuff to a deadline stresses me out. So I'm gonna get on with it. Honestly, they tell you to niche down in YouTube, but I'm just not sure there's a market for antique sewing. With a background commentary of Modern Warfare 2, but the amount of footage I have of it is staggering. So if you're moving in with your partners, I implore you, lobby them to give you a whole room rather than a shared room. stitching the side seams of the sleeves, making sure to leave a gap at the end for my hand to get through. It turns out a wooden rolling pin makes a great improvised sleeve board. Who knew? I can pin the sleeve into the arm side. My partner has an important question. Have you eaten? Oh, 
Oh, no, I haven't. I should probably do that. Yeah. Shit, man. It's half ten. Oh, bollocks. Sustenance is a mustenance. It's 11 a.m. the next day. And don't worry, gang, I'm not on the gin yet. It's just a smoothie. I just think every drink's better in a cauldron. Like, why haven't I been using this up to this point? It's just been sitting in my cupboard. I'm gonna finish it today. I really am. I was gonna finish it yesterday and then it got horrendously late and I was still gathering sleeves into holes. <laughs> I've still got one sleeve that I haven't gathered into the hole, but the other sleeve, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Okay, we're here, we're fine, we're fine. <laughs> we're still sane. Yeah, so the other sleeve, we basted this on. I just need to whip the pins out and then machine it. Then we gotta gather the other sleeve down, pin that in, baste that, machine that, and then the bulk of the dress is done. The only thing left to do after that is hemming and finishing the seams on the inside. And then maybe I should shower because I'm gonna be honest with you, it's been a while. This is what happens when you stay inside with a mission to complete a dress. Or maybe that's just what happens when I stay inside with a mission to complete a dress. Anyway, I'm stalling, I'm procrastinating. Let's finish this dress. So after trying on the set in sleeve, it does work, but I have pinched out a little bit of this fabric here because this is just looking a little bit loose. I just want a slimmer fit on the arms. I mean, if that's all the adjustment I have to make to the sleeve, I'm pretty happy with that considering it was completely self-drafted. I usually hand fell my hems, but I wanted to see if I could get a really neat finish by machine. I did the same on the sleeves too. I did, however, hand fell the seam allowances. I stitched a button and loop on the ends of the sleeves. I didn't have any of this elastic in, but it's amazing what you can do with a spare hairband. It's finally done. <laughs> I'm gonna go have a shower and do my hair and makeup because my God, is it needed. I'm going to transform this Gandalf the Grey, weathered, grizzled, thoroughly sick of the Balrogs bullshit look into preened and polished and ready to take on the entirety of Mordor, Gandalf the White. This might be my favourite thing I've ever made. I want 10 more in different fabrics. I'm so glad I went for the puff sleeves. I think it gives it a real witchy vibe. While there are a couple of places the dress falls short, the arm size are way too big, which does somewhat restrict arm movement. Generally, I'm thrilled. And I'll be wearing this on every occasion I can. Please do like the video if you liked the video, and subscribe to become part of this lovely little YouTube family. See you all next time for more chats, more crafts, all that good stuff. Bye!